Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies, a podcast about people sharing extraordinary stories about how music has impacted their lives. Welcome, everyone, to Music Junkies. I'm your host, Annette Smith, and today our special guest is Showtime and MC. They are from the band called TT Top Tier. I love... I love how Seth kind of described you guys, how you're a black and white hip hop duo, right? Who have you traveled the world, you grew up together, you've known each other for years, and you just have this awesome message of just sending love, fun, and unity. And I, and I love that. I think that's great. I like your guys' new song, and we're going to kind of dive deep into um, a few of your, your latest hits, I guess you could say. So welcome, you guys, to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Happy Pride Month. Yeah. Yay, yay, yay. So I was listening to some of your, your songs, and before I dive deep into them, I, I want to know your guys' love for strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> the love for it? I mean, you know, it's, um, I don't know, living in America, especially like where we're from, is kind of like a normal thing, uh, especially when you, you know, become of age. So it's something that, you know, you just kind of have to do. And, you know, when you do it, you experience like a lot of, uh, it's pretty intense. <laughs> you know, yeah. we respect the art. Yeah, exactly. You know, it takes a lot of uh, quad power, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of strength <laughs> training. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's an art. So. It's true. We're all about so we all know, like, first, your first strip club, did you go to the really classy one? Or were you like, no, no we're just going to go to the worst strip club and start there and then work our way up? Well, that's funny because uh, I think, like, you know, when you first go to it, you don't necessarily even understand what's classy, what's the hole in the wall. So the first experience of it is, I think, awesome regardless. And then it's upon going to other ones that you could then decipher, oh, wow, this one was trashier or this one was more upscale. Uh, just from like, you know, maybe, um, you know, like the first ones we went to, the uh, food was like very cheap, uh, drinks were very cheap. And then, you know, maybe one in like New York City, uh, the prices are like way more. So then, you know, basically pretty much experience lets you figure out, okay, this one was trashy and this one was upscale. Yeah, and half the time you're not really planning to go to a strip club. Yeah, so you know, but yeah. just avoid the ones with the buffets. Yeah, it's not a good. It's not a good look. Right? Strip clubs and buffets. That's yeah. not a good look. So how much money yeah. do you usually spend on the girls in a strip club? No, no, it's a good question. I mean, I'd say anywhere from like five hundred to. I think one time it was um, a birthday celebration, so I think collectively the group might have spent like ten k which is a lot of money uh, when you think about it. But, you know, when you're going through the throes of it, you don't even notice that. Like, it's just, you know, you're just having a good time and obviously alcohol is involved, so. <laughs> yeah, and then you wake up in the morning and you realize I literally spent 10K. <laughs> right, and then maybe maybe even, it takes more than like the following morning. Maybe it's like, you know, I need to actually purchase something and then you recall, oh man, I spent that. Oh man, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. And half the time I'm not in my house, I wake up in the car. Right. And I'm like, how'd I get here? Or, or you, you know, wake, or up, wake up still partying. Still partying. And, you know, then, you know, like I said, it takes a few days before you actually get back to your actual senses to realize what's occurred. <laughs> but I think, you know, that's the example of having a good time, right? That's right. I love strip clubs. Absolutely. I actually, my when I moved to Calgary, my first job, was a waitress in a strip club and the place was called the French maid. Oh, we nice. literally had to wear a French maid outfit. And yeah, that's cute. That's cute. I used to sell my stockings to the guys all the time for like a couple oh, of days. Right. They uh, like worn obviously, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to have like a stack of fishnet stockings and I would wear them and then I would go sell them. And then like, I'd make crazy money just selling my stockings. Nice. Oh, guys, I, I believe it. Guys. I've seen, um, I saw recently on Instagram, um, a, li- a woman is selling her boob sweat. Yeah, for like, my daughter I believe this like, today. Yeah, yeah, I think she's making like like 20k a week, something along those lines. And like, you know, that's serious. That's 
I, I first heard she was selling her farts in a jar is what I first Yeah, I've heard about that one too. Um, yeah, I've heard about that one too. And that, that's awkward. Some, someone would sell their bath water. Yeah. That's also a thing. Saliva. <laughs> yeah. We might be in the wrong industry. Maybe we like, we should start doing that for 20 K a, a week. Right. That's that serious. I mean, you could, you could pay, you could go to college with that. That's right. <laughs> Just a couple of sweats a day and pay your tuition. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start with your first song. You guys ready? Yep, sounds great. All right. Step up in that building, look at So step up. Yeah, step up. Step up. So yeah, tell me um, a little bit about who wrote that song. What was it about? So, you know, we both, met, um, I guess majority of it is, I guess, me on that particular track. But, uh, you know, it was a collective. Like, we literally sit together with a team and, you know, we just jot down um, thoughts. But we always want to keep it as, like, energetic and, um, I guess, as poppy as possible. Uh, straight to the point. Um, a lot of hook. Um and that that song's literally it was just it's like pure fun. Um trying to think, uh you know, literally some like I say higher than the escalator, like that's literally like smoking weed, um, to essentially do almost everything you're doing. Uh, just for that particular moment. It's just supposed to be like it's just like pure fun, like just like elation. Um just good time. And I felt like the beat like kinda asked for it in a weird way so yeah also the whole team element you know team hella good yeah you know so yeah the whole idea of you're going somewhere with your your posse mm -hmm. you know and you're having fun yep. you gotta step up yeah yeah so you guys have known each other for how long uh, at least 10 years now yeah ten, well ten, no more than, more than that yeah more than that so yeah. i would say uh like 15, 15 years, yeah, like 15 yeah. years, 15 years. Uh, but we really didn't like, we, we were like, you know, cordial friends that, uh, became tighter that, you know, we loved like all genres of music and, uh, we ultimately like, you know, we've known each other for about 15 years, but we didn't really start doing music till about maybe now eight years. And then I would say maybe the past three to five years, we've taken it on a, a, a more serious uh, business uh, career approach. What is one thing you guys argue about the most when you're creating? Oh, that's a good point. That's a good yeah, question. I had a question before. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we don't argue. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, I don't recall us arguing. I mean, you know, we always throw in ideas, and I think we always find a way to just like both put our ideas on it. I think we just come to that agreement in some way. Maybe like album art? Okay, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe a visual maybe effect we'll argue about. Like I tend to want to be more like um, like risque, um, freaky, sex <laughs> like sexual. Yeah. And he may want to be more abstract, uh, may want to have like a, wait, I don't know what that means, you know, type approach with it. Yeah. But I think we, we still ultimately find a common ground. Yeah, we don't fight. We're lovers, not fighters. Yeah. So Definitely. peace and love. Peace and love. For real. That's, right. That's it. Showtime, yeah. what's your what's uh what's one thing that you appreciate the most about what MC brings to the table or to the group? Um, just understanding the foundations of keeping it poppy. Uh I tend to maybe just want to um write verses like, you know. But then instead of maybe just continuing with a verse, it's like, no, maybe we should bring the 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 hook back in. And then I, you know, when it's all said and done, I'm like, you know what, that was a great idea because ultimately the hook is what's the driver. So I would say like the pop element to the music, he, um, you know, hones that really well. I love it. So how about you, MC? What does Showtime bring to the table that you appreciate? Well, I can't talk, keep it poppy, but mm -hmm. I think uh, he brings a lot. He brings a lot. I think uh, what sticks out for me mostly is the wordplay and... He'll even give me some lyric suggestions that I'm like, oh, I didn't even, like, I'll pass some verses by you or some, mm -hmm. you know, hook by you. And then you'll suggest like a little tweak. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's what that needed. So the wordplay, I would say, and also the 
I think the creativity, you know, just the creativity. Sometimes he's like, all right, let's just, uh, I'll just hum right here, you know, in the background or like, you know, he'll just, he'll kind of hear it before it's even recorded, you know, so. Oh, and one thing I'll say too, if he's helped me with is like, I tend to be, I guess, more vulgar. And then he'll maybe be like, you know, maybe you don't need to be that vulgar for this particular part. And, and I like that. It's cool. So who inspires you guys to write your stuff? Well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I love so many musicians. Uh, I think, like, fundamentally in my mind, like, with my mom, she got me on a lot of classical music. Uh, well, you know, I would deem it classical because, you know, pastime. Um, but I would say artists that come to mind off the jump, like uh, Ready for the World, uh, definitely Michael Jackson. Uh, I'd even say Notorious B.I.G. as far as like his delivery. Um, and then if I have to say like modern, I would say maybe like Tyga, like Wiz, uh, Khalifa. Um, there's, there's a lot. Um, I, I know I'm forgetting artists right now, but... I would say, like, fundamentally, those are the names that come to mind off the bat, off, off of hearing the question. Did you mention uh, Christopher Cross? Okay, Steve. How could I forget him? Christopher Cross. Yeah, Sailing. Yeah, that's, yeah he's amazing. Take me away. Yeah. Yeah, now Christopher Cross is really cool. <laughs> yeah, I love Prince. Yeah, Prince. I'm a big Prince guy as far as the sort of foundation. And, oh, Stevie Wonder, too. Oh, gotcha. I think Stevie Wonder is the best of all time. But, well, Michael... Can't disrespect Michael like that, but yeah, I guess Michael collectively, right? Right, with the dancing, yeah, exactly. the whole entertainment. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace. Yeah, yep. I love that. Not a lot of rap artists would say those people's names, right? As yeah, I mean, like NWA and you know all this kind of. Well, yeah, Ice Cube. Uh, yeah, well, I, I think of Ice Cube immediately when you mention that. And no, Ice Cube definitely has some cool songs. Like today was a good day. Um, I always like respected that the way he flowed on a beat. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely other art I can't think of at the moment that definitely influenced like how I go about it. Um, even like, um, I'm th trying to think of like boy bands, like even like uh, there's this group Blackstreet, they were yeah. cool. I was going to um, say Backstreet, but you said Blackstreet. Yeah, no, so. back, no, Backstreet Boys was cool too. <laughs> yeah. They definitely were. Um, uh, Gotta give some women credit. Like, uh, Sorry. I think, like, so Christina Aguilera's classics. I, I loved her voice when I was a little kid. Um, trying to think, well, I think Rihanna has some cool stuff. Um, Did you guys yeah. grow up with a lot of music in the household? Your parents oh, yeah. play a lot of music? Yeah, definitely. My mom used to make, uh, like, me and my siblings, like, perform for her and stuff when we would drive her crazy. She would make us, like, perform and apparently I would always attempt to steal the show so I guess it was kind of naturally in me to at least uh the performing part of music even if I didn't know the lyrics or what I was doing I just kind of would stand on the table and like act like I was someone he still, he still does that yeah, he doesn't know the lyrics <laughs> find the nearest table right <laughs> no yeah uh my, my mom was really into Bob Marley Oh, uh, my dad was really into cat. He's an older guy, and he had kids late, so he was really into Cat Stevens. Like nice. he was always playing some. Ca I love Cat Stevens, mm -hmm. like, and um, he was always playing Janice uh, Janice Joplin, a lot of classic, you know, folk and classic rock. Yeah. And then my mom was my mom was younger than he was, so she was really into more like eighties and mm -hmm. like Prince and you know uh, Michael and. Yeah, I'm gonna remember Sting. Sting, oh, oh great! Um, Hands down, Sting. Yeah, Sting's cool. yeah. the police awesome. is cool. Yeah. You're like obsessed with the police too. <laughs> and I don't know who did a. Uh, oh, Bee Gees was cool too. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know who did a uh, Dancing Queen. I, I maybe mean, Abba. Abba. Okay. Yeah, Abba. Yeah, I used to. My mom loved that song, so I definitely loved it. Pretty much whatever my mom loved, I loved. <laughs> like, I love your like, guys's <laughs> ray of music. It's refreshing. Right. Mm -hmm. So many people just stick yeah. to one jar run. I am like big on like everything. You know, my my stepfather was like 14 years older than my mom. So my mom is like, you know, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, all that kind of stuff. And then my dad was like Chuck Berry, all like totally uh -oh. 50s. So uh -oh. like my realm of music growing up was was all over the place. And I and I love that. I appreciate that. 
and mm -hmm. being able to pass it on to my kids where they can hear any really any song and they're like oh I know this song instead of just sticking oh I just like pop or I just like country it's like oh my god you're robbing yourself right like mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's a lot of great music out there there's a uh, you heard Orville Peck no Orville Peck he's doing right now you gotta, you gotta check, check out Orville Peck. Peck he's He's like one of my favorite country artists right now because he's uh, doing country disco. Oh. And he's like getting big. He's getting like, he's like, like he was on NPR the other day. Like he's getting like notoriety. He wears this like beaded mask whenever he performs. So not many people know what he looks like. So he's got that, you know, he's got that little, little taste. Yeah. I love that. All right. We're going to play your next song. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah so I just yeah. love the beginning. It's like so cool. Yeah, and that was the goal, right? Like you want to put you in a trance where oh, I gotta get the rest of it. You know, there was a lot of alcohol involved in making that song. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sounds like it's kind of slower bass. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's cool. Yeah, definitely a Bombay Sapphire. Um, I, I, I remember us writing that. There was definitely like a handle of Bombay Sapphire and like. You know, us and the team, we uh, definitely finished it that evening. <laughs> Do you guys um, enjoy having drinks in the studio when you're writing? Does it loosen you up a little bit? Oh, definitely. It, it, helps, um, it helps allow you to escape, you know, everything, kind of hone in what you're attempting to do. Um, and it also loosens you up. It, like, this is crazy because it helps you zone in but then it also loses you up. I know that might be like an oxymoron. That's kind of how I thought all this does. It's like, like it does. yeah, it does. It like literally kind of makes you focus, but also chill. Yeah. You know? it's, yeah. yeah. It's like a stimulant like, and a depressant kind of. Uh, Not that you're out for alcoholics or anything. You don't <laughs> drink too much alcohol. Yeah. But, yeah. but don't yeah. drink it. Right. Yeah, don't drink it. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, in the studio, yeah. definitely. But not while we. Uh, we usually don't, don't drink, drink that much when we're recording. No. Because it really does mess with your pipes. Yeah. And just for writing. Just for writing. Yeah. 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 MC, what's the first yeah. album you ever owned? And how did you, like, how did you purchase it? How'd you buy it? How'd you get it? Um, The first one. <laughs> the first one I owned? Yeah. Like, that was my own. Not my parents' records. Uh, I think it was, and I think I'm getting an album name right. It's kind of embarrassing, but I think it's Green Day's Dookie. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I think that was my first actual album that I, I bought because I thought the name was funny. And I was like super young, you know what I mean, when I bought it. I was like, yeah, see, I was like four or five, and my mom's like, here's some money, go, you know, whatever, buy a CD or whatever. Yeah, see, now I'm upset because I didn't even mention it. Punk influences, like, <laughs> there's so many punk bands that we like as well, so I yeah, feel kind of weird. Really? Punk yeah, like, yeah, we talked about so many genres, and I can't believe I just skipped over punk, but, uh, yeah, Green Day is obviously, like, you know, everyone knows Green Day at this point, um, but, uh, yeah, Green Day, and I guess as far as for me, the one that I purchased, I remember, was, uh, my first one was, uh, 50 Cent's, uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. Nice. And, I remember, like, it's just so crazy, like, the buzz that Bippy created, he really made everyone feel like, you know, like we knew him. Uh, and I remember when I got that CD, that's when we actually still went to, like, the local mall and purchased a CD. Like, you know, it doesn't even exist anymore. But it's too bad. Um, it's too bad. That was my CD. That was your first album or CD, sorry. Uh, that I remember with like my own money, like saying, I need this. You know? Yeah. And that, that's crazy because, you know, I can't, I mean, there's a lot of artists where I'm like, well, I can't wait to hear them. But I remember, you know, obviously my age might have been perfect timing where we can be influenced really easily. But I remember like as clear as day, like that I literally like waited for the days for it to come out. <laughs> that's awesome. Favorite yeah. place you guys have ever performed, like crowd that you've ever performed for? Epic. 
Okay, uh, wait, what, what about it? Like, just, like, Yeah, where? like, is there a place that you perform that you're, like, the crowd is into it, I absolutely love mm -hmm. it, I'd love to come back and perform for the same crowd, same venue, same Okay, um, so, so as far as, like, a crowd where I thought everyone was cool was, like, local house parties, uh, I always felt like those were the most intimate ones. Um, and then as far as, like, being at a venue, I would say probably... Uh, Either Voltage or Stanhope, but maybe even Voltage, right? Yeah, maybe. I think, I think, well, it's your answer. Yeah. No, so, so, yeah. Okay, so I would say Voltage, actually, because I remember uh, there was, like, you know, two women that we, you know, didn't even know, and they were dancing, like, religiously to, like, you know, they, they were, like, 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 uh, like just, there's no way you know us, you know, so... You know, stuff like that makes you feel like, all right, oh, maybe there is an opportunity here. Like, you know, there are some random people that just showed up at this bar that we or, or a mini venue that we played at, and they're kind of going nuts. It's like, Honestly, though, the, the Stanhope Stand House is in uh, North Jersey, and it's yeah. a pretty big, it's a pretty, not a big venue. It's actually a small venue, but it's pretty uh, popular. Uh -huh. I bought to ask them through there. We we opened up for a metro station, so that was they were like on a reunion tour or something. And like, you know, metro station, shake, yeah, shake, 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 shake it. <laughs> and we got on the bill and opened for them, opened for their tour, and that was that that show was really one of my favorites we've ever played actually because the crowd was just really good. Yeah, they were just really into it. And it was packed. And it was packed. Yeah, there's nothing like a packed house, you know. Um, like, the bigger the audience, the more likely I feel like you'll give it your all. So, yeah, that was uh, notable. Because, you know, we've done a lot of mini shows that I don't want to say weren't notable, but in my mind that's kind of, like, matched up with it. Like, I don't necessarily remember, oh, was that that one or was that that one? But I still don't know stuff that's out. What's, what's, the, what's it like seeing the crowd or people singing to your music for the first time? Uh, it's, it's, it's literally everything. Um, it's hard to describe. It's, it's, it's undescribable, but a wave of positive emotion definitely runs through you. Uh, you know, and, and like I said, uh, just a few minutes ago, like, it makes you feel like I can continue this journey. Yeah, it's like your sound cut off there for a second, though. Sorry. There, that's better. Okay, okay here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, it just really helps uh, fortify you going through the journey. Because it's no joke, you know. It's, um, you can't, like, if you take music jokingly, it's not going to go anywhere. So when you get into that serious space of it, you need, like, light, light, fun, hard moments to, you know, keep trekking along. You know? Yeah, I love the way you describe that. That's such a great yeah. way to describe it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's real. real. Yeah. yeah, it's just, just like, like uh, dopamine splashing on your brain, your brain like, like, when you're playing, playing a show, show like that. And it's just like, like oh, okay, it is like, like Yeah, I'm going to have the dopamine supply, but like, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's one of our nicknames. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We actually, um, yeah, the more yeah, yeah, we become so foolish. Well, just as a preview, we actually, we also sometimes help people where, like, you know, people who are suffering from depression. Exactly. We actually talk them through it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we let them know that, like, you know, as great as you might think we are, we, we you know, we're humans and we go through it. So you just got to believe in yourself. Make yourself busy. I think, um, what is, what is, what is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a devil. It's a devil. It's a devil. It's true. So, so I, I, I think, think a lot of times, too, with depression is because you're actually not putting your mind to work. And if you're not putting your mind to work, you have so much time to be thinking about depression, thinking about fear. But if you keep yourself busy, and that doesn't mean, like, oh, you got to be making money to be busy. Like, just keeping yourself busy, like, you know, going for a walk. Uh, taking a so like, You know, you see an area that you've never been to, maybe, you know, like, check it out, you know? And you might open the doors to where you're like, oh, man, this is actually tapping my depression. I like so, it. Uh, I agree. Yeah, so are you guys single? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, 
That's a good question. I have significant other. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have significant others. Yeah. But so I want you guys, if you were single, are you guys more of a hunter or are you like to gather a bunch of women? Or do you like to like hunt your women down and just go do with that one? Well, I'll say this, like, due to the fact that we have significant others, like, I think, I think the, the best, best response is no response. <laughs> yeah, is no comment. Yeah, no comment to that. You know? <laughs> How about stalkers? Do you have any stalkers? Oh, of course. That's that's normal. Yeah. That's that's normal. Normal. yeah. I mean, I had stalkers before I even said I'm a musician. So. All right, let, <laughs> let's hear the weirdest stalker story. Oh, no. You want to hear that? I mean, there's, there's yeah. a few. There's a few. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give a quick one. Um, so there used to be someone that literally was following me everywhere. Um, I, I used to be a server at a restaurant, and uh, she was, like, coming in, like, leaving, like, little notes and stuff. And then, like, my whole work staff found out, so then they were, like, harping on it on me. Um, I never, you know, I didn't call the police or anything, but, you know, just, like, you got to you gotta relax, you know? <laughs> Like, like I, I'm, 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 you know, I, I like, like that, that you like, like me, but you know, that's kind of it. <laughs> Did you sleep yeah. with her? Uh, the stalker. Yeah. Um, no, no I, I haven't, haven't slept, slept with any stalkers. I mean, I have. Because <laughs> <that's> sometimes <laughs> they become sense. stalkers yeah, when you yeah, sleep. Yeah, with yeah. Them. you did say you did say we could talk about anything, right? <laughs> so I have, I haven't really slept with any stalkers, but I guess like you know. I guess I don't know. What's the like proper way to say like like oral like like, like, <laughs> like you know? So I mean, you, no, I mean, never, got oral never, from like, stalkers, but not slept with them. Yeah, yeah, and then I mean, I would say that was more on like uh, first and foremost, like let me add a disclaimer a long time, ago, right? <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> in a galaxy far away, yeah, yeah. <laughs> time period before man do I read it right? right? Um, MC, are you gonna? Own up to any stalking blowjob stories or? Uh, no, I don't have one. Well, no, I don't have a story. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, just the usual like Instagram stalking, you know, someone who doesn't follow you, someone you don't follow, and suddenly they're showing up on all your story views, and you're like, okay, that means you're clicking on my profile and you're literally looking at my story every time I post a story, which is kind of creepy. Yeah, and you, know where I'm gonna, and you know where I'm gonna be, and you know where I'm at. And then, like, somehow, if you're not there, but someone that I know you're directly affiliated is magically there. I love it. All right, next story. Right. Maybe this isn't a stalking story, but I don't think it is. So high. Yeah. So high. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, that's uh, man. That song. Um, I don't, that was probably one of the tracks that I felt like we put a lot of energy into. Like, because a lot of our songs, I think we can really bang out in like, I guess, like one studio session as far as writing. But I remember with so high. I felt like we wrote it. And then, and then we wrote, wrote it, and then, and then we wrote, wrote it, and then, and then we wrote, wrote it. it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like and then, then we recorded it. it. And then, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then we wrote, then we recorded it, it. And, and then we wrote it. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that song, that song that's had a lot of trials and tribulations, many shovels. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I personally love that song um, a lot. Uh, I think it really embodies uh, like. I, I guess, guess that time of life, um, just, you know, know like, like first off, starts, starts off with me smoking. Um, um, I, think I think I was like, like, like a definitive pothead at that time. Like, like I still smoke, but definitely didn't know where I was smoking at uh, during that time. And, and I also I think, think like, like life in general was more like, you, you could do whatever you want still. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I think also too, we were finally breaking into like wanting to make it a career. So I was like, all right, now let's take it a bit more seriously. 
So yeah, that song is uh, that's too deep. That's not deep for us. Kind of simple hook. Mm-hmm. You know, G M Parliament. People don't speak English. English. They like that song. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thailand and Japan has received it pretty warmly, and then I kind of want to like. Like, like film a bunch of people and just say like, so what did you hear now? You know, I, I, I just, I just want to engage it. Sing a hook for me. Yeah, 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 sing a hook for me. But I know that people tend to dance to it, so that's cool. Uh, yeah, that song took a little bit. Who would you guys love to collaborate with if you could pick anybody, alive or dead? Alive or dead. Well, I'm going to go on live just because I feel like it would help open doors for us to get, you know, deeper into the game. Uh, and it would probably, like, I think, I mean, I think, like, how could you not want to work with Drake, right? Like, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, you know, he's, he's essentially a gold mine, right? So I think uh, Drake would be epic. And definitely I'd like to hear, I'd like to pick his brain on how he would go about it. You know, because we always hear his finished work, but to actually be with him during the process of the work, would, that would be everything. You're not just saying that because that's me. No, I'm saying that because Drake is huge. He's huge. He's, he's like the uncle. I was going to say Jack Harlow. Okay, he's just like the new school. Yeah, because he's a little newer. I mean, he does sound more like us to an extent, right? Kind of, yeah. Definitely, like, associated with the sound of Drake is like. Yeah, it's like, that's so unique in a way. That's a different galaxy. Yeah, different, you know. Twenty thousand dollars right? Yeah. What's the best yeah. advice you guys have been given so far in your career? Um, that um, the first place. Uh, I think um, Langston Hughes said it best. Um, he's um, a poem, a poet uh, during the Harlem Renaissance, nineteen twenties. Uh, he said, "Life ain't been no crystal stair." And, you know, essentially that poem is letting you know that, like, you know, shit isn't peaches and cream. However, you you keep, you know, you keep like a hammer with a nail, you keep going at it, you keep going at it. And believe it or not, it can work out. It's, and it's going to work out when it's supposed to work out. Um, yeah, for me, it's, um, I used to drum with this uh, West African drummer named Hani Abeli. And uh, he's like... <clears throat> pretty big and he we were about to play a show this is a while ago we were about to play a show and he told me because i guess he saw i was like kind of nervous because that wasn't you know i used to performing as much and he's like just show him what just show him what you know just show him what you know it's like don't try to be somebody else when you're on stage just and don't be too don't you know let your nervousness take over just show them what you or practice, practice. Yeah. you know, yeah. show them yeah. That's great about showing show me, you know. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I'm curious, do you guys, how many pairs of sneakers do you guys have? Ooh, I have tons. <laughs> um, I don't know, I should have yeah. I have tons. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a sneaker head, but I definitely, definitely appreciate um, sneakers. And uh, the more colorful the better, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, you want to still match in some, like, manner. So, uh, I would say, uh, I would say I have at least, like, just sneakers alone, I have at least, like, 60 pair. At least. And, you know, and it builds, right? Yeah. yeah. What about you, MC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I want to see it. <laughs> you know, my feet aren't growing anymore, so <laughs> something I bought, like, two years ago, three years ago, you know, you have to keep wearing them. That's right. How about yourself, MC? How many sneakers you got? Uh, again, I haven't counted. Uh, definitely not fewer than 60. Maybe, maybe 40, 45, something like that. What's your guys' no. favorite sneaker you own or want to own? Okay. Uh, one of them, I mean, at some point, I feel like I have to purchase like, a pair of like, Balenciagas or Louis Vuitton. But, you know, that price range is, like, in Spain at the moment. I mean, I hear of, like, cheaper numbers, but at some point I have to get a pair of those, like, you know, $3,000 kicks just for, uh, just honestly, I guess it's just materialistic at that point. Yeah, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, I love my retro, uh, my retro Nike blazers. Mm. Yeah, I think just as an all-around shoe, 
they're like almost perfect. I just I like that high top, old school high top look. Um, as far as want to own all of them, right? <laughs> however many I can. <laughs> yeah, as far as for me, um, the ones I own, I have um, the Independence Day uh, bronze. Nice. Is like, yeah, they're really cool because um, it was like in commemoration for uh, the U.S. basketball team and Fourth of July. So it's like a really cool, like uh, like a blood red with a light red, and then there's like uh, navy blue throughout it, and then like white stars. And there's like signatures on it. So I think those are probably the dopest ones that I own. And I only want like three times, so they're still like brand new, even though they came out about like six years ago now. I love it. All right, we're gonna hear, we're gonna play your your single, your new. Mary goes around. Mary goes around. Yeah, so um, that, that, I felt like we had to come out with a song like that because, um, you know, we're always hearing about uh, heartbreaks or potential heartbreaks or, you know, deceiving. And so we felt like making that song was literally for the people. Whereas, you know, a song like So High, I think it was like for us. So yeah, Mary Goes Around was literally for the people. And yes, of course, there's millions of songs uh, with, you know, the same topic, but we still felt like with our core audience, you need, we needed to let them know that this is unfortunately a normal part of being a human being. And it's, it's uh, we, felt, we, we felt it was important to articulate it from a different perspective, like, I don't know if you caught this from the lyrics or like listen, listen to it that like that much to really kind of grasp it, but it's actually from the perspective of a, uh, well in this case a woman, but a woman knowing that a guy's significant other is cheating on him, like they're friends and she doesn't want to rock the boat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like a tough situation to be in, you know, and I think some people can relate to that, but you're not necessarily in a relationship, but you know what's going on in the relationship and it's not pretty. Yeah, it puts it, you're in a hard place, um, especially if you're friends with that person on both sides, you don't even want to be a part of it. That's a, yeah. It's crazy to even be in that situation. So the fact that you guys are writing about that is just not fun at all, right? What do you guys want your audience to know about your music? Like what kind of message are you trying to get out there to your audience? So, uh, I mean, okay, so, you know, we start with a a different unity ticket. Um, And in that, you know, we have periods. And so I have different it's like the obvious, right? But then in unity, it might not be obvious, but then upon, you know, meeting us and hanging out or coming to a show, you'll see like, okay, they're different, but they're actually one. Um, and then the ticket is like, you know, to ultimately, uh, to be in our presence type of thing. Uh, you want to collaborate? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, take this sort of vision of the, of the group. Mm-hmm. And it's to show people that, you know, because you're different doesn't mean you have to hate each other. doesn't mean you have to uh, feel even uncomfortable yeah. about that. Like, there, there's something more to life than just focusing on what makes you different. Yeah, and you really don't realize that you're not different. You're the same. That's what ultimately ends up happening. Yeah, and I think you guys, even with you just saying the black and white hip hop duo, right? It's mm-hmm. our, it's a statement, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you guys, you embrace that, and it's not different, and it doesn't have to be different. And at the end yeah. of the day, we shouldn't even have to even say it. In a sense, do you know what we I mean? We just said yeah, exactly, <laughs> and that's what comes into the unity. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and I and I enjoy your music because of that, right? Because it is very relatable. I understand mm-hmm. the lyrics hundred percent. I think, you know, a lot of people have been in situations that you talk about, whether it's good or bad or strip clubs or whatever it is, we've all been, it's, it's reality, right? It's not popping bottles. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm not, you know, like they're traditional 
I shouldn't say traditional, but the the rap shit that we hear a lot. You know what I mean? It's like girls, cars, jewelry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We get it, right? Yeah. So is that where yeah, you guys want to take? Though. Is that where you guys <laughs> yeah. want to take your kind of vibe to? Is that stage as well? Or oh, you want to yeah. keep it? Um, yeah, I think, I, think I, mean, I mean, of course. Uh, so ultimately, when you are doing it like that, you're really, you know, the goal there is to make as much money as possible, as, like as quickly as possible. Yeah. So that's kind of why you hear majority of that because it just uh, immediately resonates as, especially if an artist has gotten big from such, you want to just enter in that realm. So like, I get it for that uh, aspect of it. But and then also for us, it's like, we, we're going to be as real as possible. So I can see like the jewelry and, the, and the, the, the women, but as far as like, you know, like the gangster stuff, like, you know, that's not us. So we can't really fabricate, you know? Yeah. So that's never going to come out because it's just not us. I like that. I actually was asked to do um, a gentleman reached out to me who is a rapper and he wanted to be on the show. And I wanted to just kind of check, check him out first before I said yes. And I just I couldn't because I felt like it was all a show. The first thing I seen on the video is, let's be honest, and, and I could be wrong. But I don't know a lot of rappers that wear fucking sweatpants and put their gun in a sweatpants pocket. Like, it's just not like you wouldn't do that. Like, it's not something that you would do. Like, that's dangerous to shoot off your dick. Like, that's like not going to happen. If you're a gangbanger, you're not wearing jogging pants with your gun. It was a prop. It was a prop. You know what I mean? And I was just like, this, there's too much kind of, you know, showing a gun and it's just not, I don't know. I just want you to be real. And I just don't believe that you're being real to promote yourself. I believe you're trying to be somebody else. And that's not really how my, you know, so it's interesting that you said that. I love the way you guys said that. So I want to talk about swag though. Yeah. Um, so MC, you have a little bit of a swag to you, right? So is this kind of your look? Like glasses, <laughs> hoodie, or yeah, you know, uh, the hoodie is just easy because, like, you don't have to like focus on your hair too much. Yeah, we just yeah, 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 we my like, barber was busy, yeah, so um, yeah. but, but yeah, no, uh, I love uh, Iggy knows this. I love shades. Like, I love wearing shades. Yeah, and um, yeah, just you know, I like the whole like. Obviously, we have we're you know black black and white hip hop duo. So you know I'm wearing white right now. He's wearing black right now. We like to mix that up a lot and sort of also match our image to our message. You know. Do you guys ever switch? Do you ever wear black and he wears all yeah, white? Probably, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, more so. Oh, your sound cut off again. Sorry. Still. On. Your guys' sound is off. There we go. Can you hear it? Yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah. yeah, it was probably the connection. Um, so you guys so do we'll mix it up a little bit. You guys wear, you'll wear white, he'll wear black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll try to... Um, to disc uh, color coordinate. And then I think at some point we're going to just try to like be like, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of a uh, crisscross. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was obviously like a baby. <laughs> when we were big, but like, yeah, you would wear the same thing. <laughs> Are you guys going to wear your pants backwards? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's like as far as dressing identical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pants backwards, though, they can come back. Yeah. yeah. That's right. You guys should start yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. right. <laughs> All right, do the band-aid and the pants backwards. That would be really yeah. good. All right, yeah, last song, you guys. I love it. Let me. So who yeah. wrote that song? What's the story behind it? So yeah, I uh, wrote that. Uh, so Lemmy's pretty much, um, you know, definitely like um, your hormones are essentially raging. 
and you know, like the the feel, like you know, strip, like you. It's off again, you guys. Sorry, Showtime. Your sound again is um, off. Can you hear it? It's just like really faded, like you're in a tunnel. Can you hear us now? Yeah, now I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Remy's kind of like, um, like the hormones are raging, and uh, the 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 woman, um, you know, like she's in you, but essentially you're trying to go past the first base. Like you know, we've we've like cuddled, we've like kissed here and there, we've held hands. But now it's time to, you know, straight up have sex. <laughs> but then, you know, instead of let me fuck you, it was let me love you, which honestly is um, the influence of Ready for the World. Um, so I thought, like, you know, instead of saying let me fuck you, like, let me love you, because then it's, um, you know, it then answers the pop round, and it's not as vulgar. Yeah. And, you know, and then, you know, obviously the phrase love holds more weight um, than... Fuck. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For, for sure. a majority of the time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, did we have another story behind that? Why did I think we had a story behind this one? Yeah, I mean, if you tell me the but yeah, if you feel like you know. No, no other story? It just escaped me. Yeah, yeah, so you know, it's just letting the girl know it's like, like man, I think it's time. Yeah, like, we beat around the bush in the next level. Like, you know, like stop like, teasing yeah. me, right? I get it. I yeah, get it. exactly. They're like the teasing is cheap, but now it's time for fun. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting blue balls. I get it. I I got it. Yeah. <laughs> what's your yeah, guys' yeah. favorite? What's yeah. your favorite yeah. song to perform? What's your favorite song that you like to perform? Ooh. Well, we, we haven't, haven't really performed, performed uh, too many of the newer, newer tracks. Yeah. Because, you know, we haven't, we haven't, yeah, yeah, we haven't. So, so we're also releasing, we're basically building up to an EP release. Yeah. Uh, an EP called BAWD, B A W D. Um, which is actually uh, stands for Black Angel, White Devil, mm-hmm. because oh, awesome. they're kind of the same thing, mm-hmm. you know? So. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, spell that mm-hmm. So we're building up to that, so that's when we're kind of planning our shows out. But man, I think I think for me, it's gonna sound weird, but it's because of the one that we probably perform the most. It's gotta be uh, come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come through, spell yeah. come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I agree with that. Yeah, and then enough is you know. Enough yeah, has this weird buzz to it. it. Like, like people really, like really love that song. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean it's good. But, mm-hmm. No, it's absolutely. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. Where where can um, our fans on Music Junkies stalk you guys? Find you? Where can we yeah. go? Listen to you? All of that kind of stuff. Not the diner. No, no go the diner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I would say. Uh, okay, so Instagram is uh, at Top Tier Music Official. Uh, the way it's spelled is uh, there's nothing fancy about it, just the way Top Tier Music Official. Uh, TikTok? TikTok is the same thing. It's the same thing. Top Tier Music Official. We actually have, um, we just joined TikTok, so we're like, we're getting our bearings on it. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, pretty much we actually have a fun game called, um, it's called What's That Sound? Uh, where we play a sound and him and I try to figure it out with a with a blindfold, but we use a mask, so you know, as a ode to COVID. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so that's like that's pretty fun. Um, we're gonna dive deeper into that and make it a bit more interesting. But uh, yeah, that's our TikTok, and then um, our uh, YouTube. I, I think that's top to music official as well. But yeah, I think it is. It, no, no, wait. Where is it? Yeah, it's yeah, T-T-T-I. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's T-T-Top Tier for YouTube. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 You know? And then, I you know, know worst is the worst. If you can't find it, you can always just, you know, press like, you know, where you step up to the top tier, then I'm pretty sure Google will do the rest. I agree. And I'll be putting yeah. it out there as well. But before I let you guys go, I want I want to hear some words of wisdom from each of you. Maybe somebody is listening. You guys have been through lots of adversity, things in your life. What are what are some words of wisdom that you could share to the Music Junkies fans out there? So I, I would say, believe it or not, it's breathe. Like a lot of times, if you do that, it'll really work wonders. Um, like if you ever feel like you're about to flip out on your significant other, your family, your job, just walk away and breathe. Like, literally breathe. Like, you know, like, in through your nose, out through your mouth. And just repeat that, like, ten times. And then, like, logic should take over. That's great advice. Say. MC, you got some advice for us? Uh, yeah, so, um, it seems, it doesn't seem this way in the moment, but it always gets darker right before it gets brighter. You know, so if, if whenever things are just spiraling out of control, just know things are about to turn around. Like that's when things are about to get better. Mm-hmm. So the next time you're under a lot of stress, you're feeling like, oh, I'm never going to get out of this, that means you're about to get out of it. So just, you know, of course. Yeah, just keep on. Love it. Great words of wisdom. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Music Junkies. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good time. Right. I'm excited to have you back and then we'll be able to do even more of your songs, which is exciting. So please yeah, like, you. follow, thank subscribe. You, You're welcome. Yeah. You're really cool, man. Yeah. You're down to earth. I like you. Thank you. Yeah.